Hey, welcome to the channel where we show you how to put some prep in your step. Today we're going to be continuing our series on the Tableau Prep templates and we're going to do the Equal With Sankey developed by the Flourlich Twins. Uh, there's a lot of reasons why people decided to include Sankeys in their vises and it can be difficult to make sure that your data is prepared in the right way, especially if you want to do multiple levels. The Equal With Sankey template um, is actually really simple. And so we're going to build out the prep flow that allows your data to just fit really smoothly into the workbook that uh, was developed. And, uh, you know, so the blog post that I put out there is going to show you how to plug your data into it. And right now we're just going to walk through how you build the prep flow itself. So let's dive in. I've connected to the Superstore data set just to demonstrate how we can take a pretty standard row level data set, plug it in here, and it's going to restructure and aggregate exactly the way that we need it to. We'll have to do, if you're using the template that you just want to plug into, you're still going to have to do a little bit of work on your end, but that's another point of the purpose of these uh, templates is to really familiarize you with Tableau Prep and just some of the small steps that you can do to transform your data. So the first thing we're going to do, is we're going to use the orders sheet. So we'll pull that in. And um, if we take a look at the original data set, we've got this data sheet. It's got five steps. It's got a size column. And then if we go over here, we've got the model sheet and we've got a path from one to 50 for the top line, and then a path from one to 50 for the bottom line. So this we're going to recreate inside of prep. And so we're going to do um, generate a scaffold within prep. Uh, it's something that I've demonstrated quite a few times. I've got a videos on dynamic scaffolding. So I'll definitely put those links in uh, the, the chat or in the description, but um, I'll, I'll go ahead and recreate it really quickly for you as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a step here. We're going to call this scaffold range. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a calculation called path start. And we're going to give that a value of one. And then we're going to create a calculated field called path end. And we're going to give that a field uh, or a value of 50 because we want our path to go from one to 50. And then we're going to control and click those two fields and only keep those. So now I've got my path start of one and my path end of 50. Uh, but you'll see that there's values here that are repeated because it created a or a, it created that value for every row in the data set. We just want one row. So we're going to pull an aggregate step in, call this deduplicate. And we're going to pull in both of those fields because this is going to return every unique grouping of the columns in your grouped fields. There's only one unique grouping, which is one in 50. So I'm only going to get one row back. Then what we're going to do, because these are integers and we eventually want to generate a scaffold, the, they have to be in the same column. So we're going to pivot columns to rows. Uh, we're going to use uh, a wildcard on path. And then we're going to remove the pivot names field. So now we have one column with the values of one in 50. Exactly what we want. We'll call this pivot scaffold. And so now we can use the new row step and we'll use values from one field from the path field. And it's going to update the existing field in increments of one between my two values. And so now you can see over here showing the after that now I've got all of my fields and my path from one to 50. So this is exactly what I wanted. So what we need to do now is because if we take a look back at our model sheet, I've got 50 values for my path, but I don't have a top and a bottom. So to solve for this, we're going to just create a line here or a step here. Sorry. We'll call this top scaffold. I'm going to create a value or create a field, call this line, and it's going to have the value of top. Save that. I'm going to create another clean step. I'm going to call this one bottom scaffold, create a calculated field of line with the value of bottom, save that. And I'm going to union these two together. 
and this will be my model sheet now because if I take a look at it I'm going to remove the table names field but now I have my path from 1 to 50 for the top line and my path from 1 to 50 for the bottom line perfect looks exactly like our model sheet and so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in and pick the columns that I want for my flow so if we take a look at the Sankey template uh, there's uh, five levels here, so one, two, three, four, five. So these are the steps, and then the data is flowing through each of these steps. And so that's what I need to figure out for my data. So I need to go in to pick a clean step, and the first thing you need to decide is how you want your data to flow. And so what I want to do is I want to pick a couple of different things. Mainly, I know I want to do segment. Okay, I want to do, let's see, I want to do segment, I want to do category, I want to do subcategory, I want to do ship mode, and I want to do region. So I'm going to, I controlled and clicked all of those, and I'm going to keep, oh, and I also need one more field. So I've got my five steps, and I need something that's going to be the size, the, the value that's flowing in through all those. So for now, I'm going to use sales. Now you could do less steps if you want, or you could do more. I'm just going to do it five to keep it simple to plug into the template, but you could do um, three steps. You could do two steps if you wanted. And so I'm going to keep only those fields. And the way that I want the data to flow is I want it to go from segment to subcategory or segment to category to subcategory to ship mode to region. So I'm just going to arrange these real quickly just to make it easier for me. And so now that I've got them arranged, I'm gonna rename them. And so segment becomes step one. because so I want it to go from step one, segment, to step two, category. I want it to go from step two, category, to step three, subcategory, step three, subcategory, to step four, ship mode, and step four, ship mode, to step five, region. And then the sales field becomes my size. And so I'm gonna call this remove slash rename. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add an aggregate step and I'm gonna add all my fields here. I'm gonna remove the number of rows field, but this aggregates my data to each of my steps. And so I'm gonna call this, I'm just gonna call this the data sheet because now this essentially matches the format of the data sheet in the original template. And so I'm gonna do one last thing here and I'm gonna create a field, let's see. Create a field called join with the value of one. Okay. And then I'm going to go back to my union, create a field here called join with the value of one. And that's so that way I can join my two sheets together or my two paths together. So this has got, if I look at this, we've got the steps, got a join field, and we've got the size. We got our path for each the top and bottom and we've got our join field and so now I can do my densification. So I'm going to bring this and join it to here. It's going to join on one and one and you'll see here it's going to blow up and expand my data set. So I now have 100 rows for every one row in my original data set because there was 50 points for the top line, 50 points for the bottom line and so now every one row in my original path here gets each of those 100 rows. And so we'll call this Densify. And then I'm just gonna go in here and I'm gonna remove each of these because I don't need these anymore. And so what do we got? We got path, we got steps one through five. We've got the uh, size, got the lines. And so this is my data set. This is all I really need. Um, so what I can do now is I can go to an output step going to, let's just call this equals Sankey dash YT. All right. Uh, I'm going to run that flow. So I opened up the template and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into a sheet here. I'm going to add in my new data source. I'm 
Okay, so now that we've got it added, there's a couple things that I need to do to make sure that this swaps out smoothly. The first thing, if I look at my original data source, I see that path is in dimensions. And then another important thing to note is that the size field right now is in whole numbers. Um, and so I can do this a couple of different ways, but what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna change the size in my original set to decimals. And then I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna move the path up to dimensions. And so see size here is in decimals. So I have to make sure that um, all of my fields are in the same place, same format to do a clean swap. And so now I'm gonna replace the data source, swap that over. And so, you know, these templates are ma made to make this process really easy. But if you want to really dive deeper, understand the visas themselves, the, you know, how this, the curves are happening, um, how Sankeys are formed inside of tab Tableau, uh, check out the original blog posts from the Florilage Twins. They've got some fantastic detail in there. My purpose here with these templates is really just to help you understand how the data is structured behind the scenes. Um, and just how to create that for yourselves and how to use that in, with some real world data. And so we'll just wait for this to load for a second. It shouldn't take too much longer. All right, so now that the replacement has loaded, you can see that all of our calculations imported over here, they came through just fine. We would have had some errors had we not made those two really simple changes uh, for the path and the size. But now if we go to our main page, you can see we've got our Sankey and it looks a little bit different because I'm using some different data and different fields, but there you go. Um, that's how you build out the prep flow for the equal with Sankey. Like I said, I've already built it out for you. I'm going to put the link to the Google drive that contains the flow. You've got the link to my blog post to show you how to plug it in. Um, and then you've got the link to the Flirtage Twins websites to really understand the math and the logic behind the Sankey itself. So, you know, again, the point of these prep templates is to really help you understand um, how to use prep, how uh, you can transform your data for some of these uh, use cases, and to incorporate that, and then incorporate the understanding of data preparation into your visual workflow. So, you know, if there's any particular visas that require some data prep work that you'd like to see, let me know. Um, or if you work on a viz yourself that required a bunch of data prep work, um, it's maybe something that doesn't have a template already, let me know and we can collaborate on that. Um, other than that, I hope you get some use out of this and I'll see you in the next one.